Hello and welcome back to again to today's video. I'm going to do something a bit different with today's video. I'm going to have a look at the Soda Cycle, current Soda Cycle, uh, Cycle uh, 24. There's some interesting developments going on uh, with Soda Cycle. We're uh, very much around Soda Maximum, maybe a little bit beyond uh, Soda Maximum. Uh, but we have got some interesting developments taking place uh, with the Soda Cycle. And I'll uh, go through uh, what's happening and the latest developments in a moment. Before we go on with the video, just want to uh, explain that uh, my mouth is still a little bit uh, sore. So uh, if you're having a job to understand some of the things I'm saying in this video, I'm very sorry for that. Uh, it's just getting better all the time, but it's a slow old process. I also want to make sure the advertising, uh, there's a video ad sitting just above my uh, weather video here at gasweathervids.com. Uh, please play the video ad. It's uh, a Budweiser uh, ad uh, today uh, for the FA Cup final. Uh, please play it, you'll be supporting uh, GavsWeatherVids.com uh, by doing it. So we're going to start off having a look at the uh, solar disc uh, today. This is from the uh, website SolarHam.net. You can find this on my uh, links page. This is the current view of uh, the solar disc on our side. Uh, we've got some sunspots here, but we've actually got uh, quite uh, low solar activity just at the moment. But we have seen some uh, quite uh, quite an increasing act, quite an increase in activity over the uh, last month or so. If we have a look at this chart, this is uh, showing us uh, where the solar uh, activity has been and where it's forecast to go. And Solar Cycle 24 really starts uh, just here. I'll explain a little bit about the Solar Cycles for those that uh, aren't sure uh, what the Solar Cycle is. It's basically a, an 11 year cycle on average. Uh, sometimes it's a little bit shorter, sometimes it's a little bit longer, but on average it's an, it's an 11 year cycle of solar activity from uh, minimum to maximum and then back to uh, minimum in the activity uh, again. So you reach the maximum around five or six years into the uh, 11 year cycle and then you'll go back to the solar minimum and once you, come, once you come out of that solar minimum that's the start of the new cycle. So if we have a look at cycle 23 and then cycle 24, there is cycle 23, the maximum of cycle 23 uh, that occurred around the start of uh, the millennium actually around the year 2000 uh, then we dipped down into the solar minimum and we had a long 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 solar minimum uh, which started in around 2002 and went through to around 2008 a very very uh, long solar minimum that wasn't usually long and then uh, cycle 24 starts as uh, activity begins to pick up a little bit uh, in 2009 now exactly when the start of uh, cycle 24 uh, was is a little bit controversial officially it's December 2008 but it was such a weak start to uh, solar cycle 24 it's such a uh, delayed start it's very difficult to know and on this graph it really looks as though uh, the uh, cycle starts somewhere around the middle of 2000 and uh, uh, the middle of 2010 really um, but as I say officially it's 2008 but anyway uh, cycle 24 starts as we come out of the minimum uh, from cycle 23 so we have come out of it and we've been going up over the last few years very very gradually in towards the solar uh, maximum. We actually reached a peak, but we haven't bettered uh, so far at uh, the end of 2011. So it's quite a quick ramp up uh, through the course of uh, the last half of 2010 into 2011 uh, in particular. Uh, so we haven't uh, bettered this, but we, uh, this uh, maximum uh, that we achieved at the end of uh, 2011 and in 2012 and into 2013 uh, the activity did uh, fall away once again very unusual cycle this it's a very weak cycle it's much much weaker than cycle 23 there again is the maximum of cycle 23 uh, very intense cycle that one was this is a much much weaker cycle uh, compared to cycle 23 and it's behaving very unusually and we had that drop down through much of 2012 where not a uh, great deal of activity was going on but just recently we started to uh, pick up again through the last uh, month so really in March and April we saw that cycle uh, beginning to pick up and it could well be that we're getting a double peak in the solar uh, maximum uh, and a double peak in the solar maximum is something we've seen quite a little quite a bit of over the last few cycles so this is going back to cycle 22 uh, which was through the uh, 1980s and into the 1990s and we did get a, a double peak there in the solar maximum we had a, a peak and around uh, the end of uh, 1988 into 1989 and then a bit of a slide off from 1990 before we got a second peak not as uh, in 
Pink Tanks as the first peak, but we did get a second peak in 1991. Uh, then we fall away into the solar minimum through the mid 90s, and then through the late 90s, we go into cycle 23, which starts in 1997. We ramp up to the solar maximum in 2000. Then we dip away a little bit into 2001, second half of 2000 to 2001, and then we get the second peak again in the latter stages of 2001 into 2002. Again, notice we don't reach uh, the uh, first peak. So uh, on both cycle 22 and cycle 23, uh, we get uh, the first peak on both cycles is the actual peak of the cycle. And whilst we do get this increase, this ramp up and a second peak, it never achieves uh, the peak of uh, the, 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 the first peak of the cycle. So it looks as though we're going to get a second peak for cycle uh, 24. Probably won't get uh, up to the levels that we see in 2000 and uh, that we saw at the end of 2011. Get close to it, but probably won't get to it. And 2011 will probably go down as the actual uh, peak of solar cycle 24. Now, why does all this matter? Uh, well, there's a lot of evidence that uh, when solar activity is uh, intense, well, when we're around the maximum of the solar cycle, uh, we get less blocking over the Arctic, and less blocking uh, means that we have the Arctic Constellation positive, and for us that tends to mean uh, that in winter we're quite mild, we're wet, uh, windy with zonal westerlies coming across the Atlantic into Europe. Uh, when solar activity is weak, when we've got uh, the minimum of the cycle, uh, we increase the chance of blocking over the pole, and uh, in winter that means we get it much colder uh, and I would speculate that the reason we've had such cold winters over the last few years uh, with very uh, much block conditions over the Arctic, very uh, low uh, Arctic constellations, I would speculate that the reason we've had that is probably because the solar uh, cycle has been very weak, it's been a very weak solar maximum, whilst we're around solar maximum we're so much below uh, what we had in cycle 23, uh, the, the, the peak of cycle 23 was very intense. We're so much below that that whilst we're, we are at solar maximum, uh, really, uh, it's not having the effect that you would expect over the Arctic. We're not getting the uh, zonal sort of mild western winters uh, that you would expect. But nevertheless, as we go up with this second peak, we may turn the Arctic Constellation uh, positive. And in summer, that's quite good news if you're looking for a warm summer. So if this second peak is occurring around uh, around the summertime, which I think it may do, uh, we might turn the Arctic Constellation positive, we might build up the Azores high and uh, get low pressure over the pole. That could be good news for summer. We might get uh, a better summer, perhaps, than we've expected over the last few years. Um, and also we may see less in the way of melt over the pole. That's something else we could see. If we got low pressure over the pole, we haven't got the blocking over the pole. It could well be that we won't get quite such an extensive uh, melt season in the Arctic this year. Now this is all very speculative. I wouldn't claim to be an expert on uh, solar activity and the effects on the weather. It's not particularly well understood. Uh, but uh, it, it's interesting to ponder these, uh, there, these uh, possibilities that could occur from this uh, second peak in the solar cycle. But even with the second peak, it's going to be a very, very weak cycle. And what's interesting, if you have a look at the uh, central England temperature from uh, Hadley, uh, this is contains us back to 1750, uh, we can see that we have had a quite a major reduction in the central England temperature over the last few years. This has been um, uh, average uh, this red line this is the average of uh, central England temperature compared uh, to the 69 uh, 61 to 1990 average we can see that through uh, well through much of the 20th century actually that uh, red line is gradually creeping up if you start at 1900 uh, there we are we can see that uh, generally uh, the red line is below the 61 to 90 average but very gradually through the 20th century we do see a slow increase and then we get to the 1980s uh, where that red line absolutely shoots up into the 80s and into the 90s so yes we did go through a period of very 
warm conditions through the 80s and the 90s and we know uh, that we went through uh, those very warm conditions uh, through the 80s, 90s into the early part of 2000. Uh, around uh, 2002 there was speculation that we wouldn't see any more snow, kids wouldn't see any more snow and that kind of thing because the winters uh, were mild, uh, winter after winter after winter, it was just very very mild but we see that we have seen uh, a reduction in this uh, average uh, over the last few years the red line has definitely dropped it isn't back down uh, to where it was at the start of the century yet or even into the middle of the century but it certainly has reduced a lot uh, compared to what we see or compared to what we saw uh, at the end of uh, the 20th century and that's coincided uh, with this weak solar cycle. So if we go back to the solar cycle, uh, there we are, there's the peak of 23, where we have all that uh, activity going on, uh, the long, long solar minimum of uh, cycle 23, and then the very weak solar cycle 24 uh, that we're currently going through. And yes, that does appear uh, to coincide, the reduction there does appear uh, to coincide. So that's quite interesting, and that has happened, I would speculate, because as I say, when you get weak, Weak solar activity, we get weak sunspot activity. For us, particularly, it's a phenomenon, particularly for the British Isles and for Europe. It coincides with blocking, particularly in uh, the winter, but also in the summer as well. And when you get block conditions, uh, as we know, in the summer it gives us the cool wet summers. In the winter it gives us the very cold, sort of uh, blocked, easterly dominated winters with the winds coming in from Russia uh, that we have uh, been going through. Now, if we have a look at the solar cycles going even further back, this is the uh, so this is a graph taking us uh, right way back into uh, the 1600s, around the time of the Little Ice Age. And what's interesting uh, with this is that from 1600 to 1700, which is classified as the Maunder minimum, we see virtually no uh, solar activity at all through that century. Now, what you have to bear in mind with this is that uh, the uh, the ways that the astronomers back then uh, recorded solar activity were very basic. Uh, so there's probably sunspot activity going on uh, that now uh, would be recorded back then it wasn't recorded so actually when you look at this and you see that there's virtually no uh, activity for the whole of the uh, century from uh, 1600 going through uh, to 1700 there's virtually no solar activity that's probably not quite right there probably was some activity but nevertheless it was a very very uh, weak period uh, for the sun uh, very little activity in this Maunder minimum and then we gradually start to increase the activity again, still very weak through the 1700s to the 1800s. And then again through the 800s to the 900s, we increase the activity a little bit more. And then we carry on increasing it then uh, through into the 20th century. So we come out of the little ice age that occurs with the Maunder minimum. And we go into the warm period that we have uh, through the 20th century with all of these very active uh, solar cycles that we get through the 20th century and particularly uh, that we've had in recent uh, years. Well, as we go on with this, uh, we'll go on to the next graph, and this is from What's Up With That, uh, the website What's Up With That, you can find this on my uh, links page, uh, and we see how the current cycle fits in uh, with that uh, period uh, that we look back to uh, there. So this is the current cycle, cycle 24. Uh, this is where the peak is going to be. It's going to be under uh, 100 uh, in terms of the uh, average sunspot uh, uh, average sunspot so it is going to be a weak cycle and probably it's going to be the weakest since around 1928 if we was to draw a line from cycle 24 going back uh, it's probably going to be the weakest cycle since sometime in the uh, early part of the 20th century but certainly it's going to be nothing in comparison to all of the very active solar cycles that we've had uh, through the 20th century um, just, uh, except the cycle 20 which happened uh, from 1964 to 1976 which is this one here uh, that was a weaker cycle and if you remember or maybe you're not old enough to remember but around that time around the late 60s into the 1970s there was uh, a bit of a scare about uh, global cooling funnily enough back then it was all about global cooling we're going into 
uh, another ice age and that kind of thing. That occurred uh, around a time of a much weaker cycle compared to cycle 19, uh, which happened before, and cycle 21, uh, which happened afterwards. So it's interesting to ponder that uh, we do seem to get these reductions in the temperatures, particularly in Europe, also perhaps for North America as well, although a little bit more speculative for that. But for Europe, it's very much a case that we seem to get these reductions in temperatures occurring around the time that we get these uh, weaker solar cycles. And again, I would speculate that's probably because of the blocking. So uh, that's what we're looking at. I think we are looking at the uh, we're looking at a second peak. It won't get as high, I don't think, as the first peak, which occurred in 2011 at the end of 2011. But we are probably looking at going up to a second peak of uh, Solar Cycle 24. Uh, but we've reached the maximum. I think we did reach that at the end of 2011. And then after this second peak, which is probably going to occur, occur sometime through the summer, maybe the autumn, but uh, certainly uh, within the next few months, after we reach that second peak, then we'll crash down, or we'll reduce down anyway, into the solar uh, minimum. And even with the second peak, Solar Cycle 24 is going to be a very, very weak cycle compared uh, to uh, the cycles that have gone before in the uh, last few decades. Um, it's going to be almost certainly the weakest cycle since the first half of the 20th uh, century, maybe uh, into the uh, 19th century. One final thought I want to leave you with is cycle 25. And now this is the forecast uh, for cycle 25 just here. And if this is right, we're seeing virtually no solar maximum at all. Uh, for cycle 25 that is very alarming to see that uh, I'm not sure quite what the evidence is that that's based on uh, but there is a lot of speculation that solar cycle 25 is going to be uh, very weak and if we go back to that first graph uh, that I just showed you a minute ago that from solar cycle 25 is really comparing uh, or or it can be compared to the kind of solar cycles that we was getting through the Maunder minimum uh, and that more the minimum period is the little ice age. So going back again uh, to solar cycle 25, yes, very uh, alarming uh, to see uh, that prediction just there uh, for cycle 25 with virtually no solar maximum occurring at all. And there'll be, if that's right, there will be years and years and years where the sun uh, really isn't doing very much at all. And we know, as I explained, that it's weak solar activity, the reasons aren't understood, but weak solar activity appears to coincide uh, with blocking over the pole, uh, particularly in winter, but also in summer, uh, giving us cool, wet summers, possibility of hot summers if you're on the right side of the block but very often we're on the wrong side of the block uh, but particularly uh, evident in winter when we get those severely cold winters and that happened in the more than minimum around the little ice age if that's right it could happen again with that solar cycle 25 uh, now I'm not talking about uh, climate change with this I'm not talking about uh, greenhouse gases or that kind of thing I don't get into that uh, I'm, I'm not sort of saying that this is uh, the reason for the warming and uh, I'm, not, don't, I'm not opening that can of worms at all I don't uh, do uh, that kind of thing but I'm just explaining that uh, with these weak solar cycles I think we are looking at a period of much cooler weather, uh, particularly in winter, possibly uh, in summer as well. Uh, and despite that, we're getting this second peak in the solar cycle. Overall, the trend is for a very weak solar cycles. And uh, my expectation, particularly if this for solar cycle 25 is right, is that we're going to have more cold winters coming up over the next few years. Uh, and do be prepared, actually, I would say, do be prepared over the next 10, 20 years we could get some very extremely cold uh, weather, particularly in winter, uh, over the next few decades. Uh, that's it for now. I'll be back to normal tomorrow with a weekend forecast. That's it for now. Hope you found the video interesting. That's it.